For the Bay Delta Science Conference, I was paired with Dr. Anna Starak as part of the Artist Scientist Collaboration Project. The otolith is the ear stone of a fish and they use it for balance, for hearing, for staying upright. They are very beautiful crystalline structures. They have these kind of rings in them, like a tree ring. And our research, we're looking at um, salmon movements uh, using the chemistry of the otolith because it records the water that the fish inhabited. So when a fish moves from one water mass to another water mass, which are chemically distinct, the signal in the otolith shifts at that point. So we can get age from the otolith. We can reconstruct the size of the fish from those rings as well. The stages of the juveniles of egg, and then it emerges from the gravel, it's a fry and then it grows big and fat, hopefully, and becomes a smolt, and then it's ready to go to the ocean. They grow big and fat in the ocean, they come back to fresh water to spawn in their natal river, and they stay on their red, which is the nest, and they create the nest in the first place using their, their body, their tail. And, you know, this is sometimes quite sort of sharp and large gravel, and so their body literally kind of falls apart as they're doing it. You know, they put all of their energy into like making sure that the, the red remains oxygenated, they're wafting their tails over it. And then you see them just literally kind of dying as they're kind of they're guarding their, their nests and their offspring. This natural tag is effectively recording all that information for us. We just need to know how to decipher it. We do kind of little of measurements across the growth rings to look at how the chemistry changes over time and then we interpret that using our existing chemical maps where we use water samples and juvenile samples um, and then we look at our unknown fish and we say okay where was that fish from and what habitats did it use and when. A lot of the stuff we do has been looking at these survivors and saying okay what did they do when they were juveniles in the freshwater. Currently I'm, I'm sampling them as they leave fresh water and previously we've sampled the adults that come back to spawn. What was a good strategy? Uh, who survived and under what flow conditions? We know that there are lots of users that require water. We can't get away from the fact it's a very, very manipulated system. Water moves primarily based on when we decide it should move. We have dams in most of the main rivers multiple dams within each river. So one of the things we want to understand is can we use this limited resource more cleverly? So if we understand how uh, fish respond in terms of behaviour, in terms of growth, in terms of survival, to different flow patterns, then hopefully we can kind of design a more efficient hydrograph that meets the fish's needs and the people's needs. After visiting Dr. Starok's lab, learning about her research and the thin otolith slides they analyzed, I began to develop ideas for an artistic interpretation of her research. Thin otolith slides hanging by fishing lines from man-made structures. Anna's research, understanding salmon's reaction to different water flow patterns that will enable balanced water use to accommodate both fish and human needs made me think of mobiles. Mobiles are all about balance and they would also capture the movement and weightlessness of fish in water. Layers of wax paper provide similar translucent quality like the sanded down otoliths, so when viewed against the light source, the growth rings become visible. For the fish at the end of the rope, I decided to use metal rods to create a ghost image. Just an outline of a fish to emphasize the fragility of its uncertain future. To depict the spawning salmon dying, their bodies falling apart as they care for their young, I utilized rust, eating into and flaking off of the metal rods. The bamboo fishing rods reference traditional, simpler ways of life and fishing methods. I felt that bamboo, being a fast-growing, sustainable and renewable resource, was the right material to represent a balanced environment for a healthy salmon population. 
Hanging by a Thread is inspired by Dr. Starok's Otterleaf research to find balance for fish-human coexistence as the salmon population in the Bay Delta are at the end of the rope, hanging by a thread. California is the only place in the world that supports this diverse array of runs. Now there's only one spawning location in the world for winter run, Sacramento River winter run Chinook salmon. So they're kind of really at the edge of um, extinction. <laughs>